Warbot. Yeah. All right, and now I'm going to show you how to set up the Blackbird hammock. Um, I get a lot of questions as to the difference between the line and tree strap suspension versus the adjustable webbing suspension. So I've got the line and tree strap suspension on one end and the adjustable webbing suspension on the other so you can see the difference. Um, the first thing I do is I find two trees the appropriate distance apart. Um, anywhere from 13 to 18 feet really. Um, ideally 15 feet um, is about perfect. So this end is the line tree strap suspension. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my tree strap around the tree. Basically it uh, consists of a piece of webbing with a loop in each end and one of those ends has a triangle ring. And I'm just gonna thread the triangle ring through the other loop. And this gives me an attachment point which I can attach the suspension of the hammock. And I'm going to tie this ring with a slipped bunt line hitch. And you can see a diagram of that uh, at the link below, right here. Now the other end is the adjustable webbing suspension and it is one long 14 foot piece of webbing with a loop in one end and you'll attach a carabiner to that loop, go around the tree and clip it back onto itself. <clears throat> and then from this point adjustments are made with the buckles. Simply pull through or let it out. As you can see, the hammock is now up. The first thing I like to do is take five or ten steps back just to get a good, uh, good view of the big picture. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for my suspension lines to be running at a 25 to 30 degree angle, which they are. And I'm also looking for height of the hammock off the ground, which you want it to be about chair height. Um, also, the distance between the trees, it doesn't have to be um, even necessarily. Um, a lot of people like the foot end to be several inches higher than the head end when they're in the hammock. And you can do this by actually hanging the, head, the foot end a few inches higher, or you can hang the foot end closer to the tree. For instance, you can see here uh, the head end is farther from its tree than the foot end is from that tree. So the head end is going to sag a little bit lower once the hammock is weighted, and it'll give me that uh, you know four or five inches higher at the foot end uh, that people like. And uh, a lot of times, once you step back and take a look, um, you're going to realize that some adjustments need to be made. Um, to get this 25 to 30 degree angle, you might have to raise or lower the attachment point on the tree. Uh, you might have to let more line in or out, uh, depending. So the difference between the two suspensions is basically this. Um, to adjust this end, I have to untie the knot, adjust the rope, and then retie the knot. However, with the adjustable webbing suspension, since the adjustments are made through the buckles, I can simply let out more line, tighten it up, whatever I need to do without untying and retying anything. And that's basically the main difference between the two is ease of adjustment and setup. And once you get things adjusted with the adjustable webbing suspension, you do need to tie a slipped half hitch behind the rings to ensure that it will hold body weight. And that's basically uh, about the simplest knot you can tie. Just take a little bit of slack here and just pull a loop through and just pull it real nice and tight into the rings. Should jam right into the back of the rings and, uh, and that's the safety knot. So everyone's always asking me, how do I know if the ridge line is tight enough, or if it's too tight, or if it's right? Eventually, you'll be able to tell just by looking at the support ropes going to the tree. If they're at a 30 or so degree angle, it won't be too tight. But in the beginning, it can be hard to tell what's a 20 degree angle, what's a 30 degree angle. So the best way is to lay in the hammock and feel the ridge line. So as you can see now, I'm sitting in the hammock and it actually has a little bit of sag to it, but when I lay down, it'll tighten up.
Now I just like to give it a good feel. If I can bend it about this far and that's it, that tells me it's too tight. Um, however, if I can really bend it to where it almost goes vertical, I can see that there's plenty of play in the line and that tells me it's just about right. So after you have the hammock hung the way you want it, um, it's time to stake out the guy lines. Now they're not necessary, but it will pull the mosquito netting apart, make the hammock feel roomier on the inside, and on the shelf side it'll actually um, support heavy items if you do have heavy items in the shelf. Now the guy line is basically just a length of shock cord with a loop in one end and a cord lock on the other. And I'll simply take the loop, loop it over the stake, and all adjustments are made just by adjusting the cord and the cord lock. Now to get into the hammock, I'm going to unzip. I'm going to grab the edge. If it's a double layer, I'm going to make sure to grab both edges. And I'm going to back in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to Take my hand and I'm going to push all the excess fabric back behind me so that I'm only sitting on the first 16 inches of fabric or so. Duck underneath, kick my shoes off, and I'm in. You'll find in a hammock like this, uh, the way to get flat is to lay diagonal to the ridge line. Right now I'm laying in line with it, but I simply put my feet over to the right in the foot pocket. I can adjust by grabbing fabric. You don't ever want to grab the shelf or the netting or the, um, the edge up here, but you can grab fabric. Any kind of bed fabric you can grab, pull and move yourself around. Um, so you can see I'm laying diagonal to the ridge line. Uh, this is one position. Um, a lot of times I like to throw my arms up over my head. There's plenty of room for that. Now when you want to roll over, it's a little different than in bed because you don't have a lot of space. Basically you've got a sweet spot in the center of the hammock. So when you need to roll over without really going anywhere. So you just kind of have to mess around with it and figure out how to move around, but uh, you get the hang of it pretty quickly. Lots of different good positions. There's plenty of room for laying fetal on your side. A lot of people, a lot of people like to lay partially on their back, partially on their side. A lot of different positions than you would normally find in a bed. Uh, just takes a little experience and a little trial and error to find out uh, what you like. All right, another cool feature is the shelf. It's just up and over the, whoop, up and over the top here, I got about two about two square feet of storage space. It's nice and out of the way.